What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing in the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at a dynamic southpaw in a lightweight division by the name of Lou Tendler. Now, Lou Tender had an opportunity to face Benny Leonard for the lightweight championship of the world. Let's take a look at his career. Now, this fascinating lightweight southpaw was known as one of the hardest hitters among the lightweights. Lou Tendler was born on September 28, 1898 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He started his career as a bantamweight in 1913. At the age of five, he was selling newspapers. At the age of 15, he was earning $17 as a main event fighter. Ten years later, he was in a six-figure class getting $116,000 for one battle. When he retired, at the age of 30, he had earned a million dollars in boxing, and following his retirement, he became a successful restaurant owner. He fought the top men with success. Lou Tendler was born on September 28, 1898 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His nationality was Jewish American. He stood five foot six inches in weight. He started as a bantamweight and fought successfully as a featherweight. Then he turned lightweight and welterweight and was managed by Phil Glassman. Lou Tendler began his professional career in 1913 and scored a no decision against Mickey Brown in six rounds. In 1914, his knockout says follows. Freddie Hoffman, four rounds, no decision. Johnny McLaughlin, six rounds. Kier Burns, six rounds. Bobby Wood, six rounds. Benny Riley, six rounds. Neil McCool, six rounds. Now he fought him twice. Kid Goodman, twice, six rounds. Mickey Brown, twice, six rounds. Young McGovern, twice, six rounds. Pinky Burns in the six rounds. In 1915, knockouts as follows. Young Diggin, four rounds. No decision. Jimmy Murray, six rounds. Barney Cinder, six rounds. Willie Mack, Three times, six rounds. Louisiana, six rounds. Battling Ready, six rounds. Jack Tolan, six rounds. Kid Goodman, six rounds. On October 1st, Young Salisbury, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No decision in six rounds. 1916, he won against Kid Texas, ten rounds. No decision. Willie Brown, six rounds. Eddie O'Keefe, twice in the sixth round. Pete Herman, very good fighter, in the sixth round. Ben Kaufman, twice, sixth round. Al Subert, twice, sixth round. Dick Loden, in the sixth round. Now, 1917, February 26, he would face Artie Root in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and get a sixth round no decision. March 26, Johnny Dundee, the Scotswap, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, no decision in six rounds. August 1st, Terry McGovern, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, former champion, no decision, six rounds. October 1st, Johnny Dundee, Philadelphia, Scotswap, no decision, six rounds. October 17th, Frankie Britt, Baltimore, Maryland, no decision, or actually it's a 12-round victory. October 29th, Rocky Kansas, former champion, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, no decision in six rounds. November 29th, Frankie McMouse, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, no decision in six rounds. December 18th, Jack Russell, Boston, he would knock him out in the fifth round. 1918, January 7th, Willie Jackson, Philadelphia, no decision in six rounds. Let's look at that fight real quick. Now, this is the fight between Willie Jackson and Lou Tendler. Willie Jackson was a very good fighter. Philadelphia, August 4th, 1919, of the f five fistic battles between New York's Willie Jackson 
and Philadelphia popular Lou Chandler. This one gets top mention. So they fought five times. They had their neighborhood brawls. New York and Philadelphia. Willie Jackson and Lou Chandler. 1920, February 23rd, Allentown, Dundee, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He would kill him in two rounds. February 28th, Dick DeSanders, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He would kill him in three rounds. March 15th, Johnny Rose, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No decision in six rounds. March 20th, Johnny Martin, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No decision in six rounds. March 29th, Stanley Hickle, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He would knock him out in six rounds. April 5th, Tim Droney, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. No decision in six rounds. April 17th, Brandy Sharp, Patterson. No decision in five rounds. May 24th, actually May 19th, Pinky Mitchell. Pinky Mitchell would be a junior welterweight champion in Milwaukee. No decision in eight rounds. May 24th, Eddie Fitzsimmons, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No decision in eight rounds. June 9th, Richie Mitchell, Milwaukee, no decision in 10 rounds. July 12th, Willie Jackson, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, no decision in 8 rounds. Now we saw that he would face Willie Jackson a five times. Nineteen twenty-one, Otto Wallace, Philadelphia. He would knock him out in four rounds on January 1st. January 26th, he would face Willie Jackson. In Milwaukee, no decision in 10 rounds. February 28th, Sailor Friedman. He would face him three times. Milwaukee, no decision in 10 rounds. He would face him again August 23rd and then August on September 13th, excuse me, Philadelphia. And he would have no decisions in eight rounds twice. And then he would face him a fourth time on December 16th, New York City. And this time he would defeat him in 15 rounds. On May 5th, Johnny Dundee, New York City. He would defeat him in 15 rounds. June 6th, Bobby Barrett, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He would knock him out in six rounds. On September 11th, Ever Hammer, Philadelphia. No decision in eight rounds. Fascinating. He's a good fighter. July 27th, Benny Leonard, Jersey City. No decision in 12 rounds. On, in 1923rd, January 19th, Powell Moore, uh, Moran, I'm sorry, Powell Moran, New York City. He would defeat him in 15 rounds. January 29th, Jack Lawler, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He would knock him out in five rounds. On June 18th, he would face Powell Moran, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. No decision in eight rounds. June 25th, Tim Droney, Allentown, Pennsylvania. No decision in 10 rounds. July 24th, he would face Benny Leonard, New York City, and lose 15 rounds for the World Lightweight Championship. Now, that was Lou Tendler's opportunity. On July 24th, 1923, he faced Benny Leonard, New York City, for the World Welterweight, uh, Lightweight Championship. Fascinating. Kid from Philadelphia had a golden opportunity. But he put on a very good fight that night. He was a southpaw. He was confusing Benny Leonard, but Benny Leonard's just a master boxer. 1924, January 1st, he would face Nate Goldman in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he would lose 10 rounds. January 28th, he would face Ray Mitchell in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he would defeat him in 10 rounds. February 28th, 1924, he would face Pinky Mitchell in Milwaukee and get a no decision in 10 rounds. April 15th, he would face Sailor Friedman once again. That's about five times in Boston, and he would defeat him in 10 rounds. June 2nd, he would face Mickey Walker, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and lose 10 rounds for the World Welterweight Championship. So he challenged Benny Leonard for the lightweight championship and Mickey Walker for the welterweight championship. He would face several fighters between 1924 and 1925.
January 19th, he would face Jack Zivic, one of the five Zivic brothers, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he was be stopped in five rounds. January 28th, Ray Mitchell, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he would defeat him in ten rounds. He would face Jack Zivic again on June 8th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and defeat him in ten rounds. On July 16th, he would face Joe Dundee in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and get a 10 round draw. 1926, he would have several fights. He would lose two of those fights. One on June 28th against Meyer Cohen in Hartford, Connecticut. He would lose in 10 rounds. And the second loss was on a foul in four rounds on November 1st, 1926, against Irish Tony Jordan in Philadelphia. He would go on to have another loss. On 1927, April 12th, against the Nebraskan Wildcat, H. Hutkins, Los Angeles, California, he would lose to him in 10 rounds. March 15th, Young Harris. Young Harry was a good fighter. Los Angeles, he would stop him in 8 rounds. August 9th, Danny Gordon, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he would stop him in 8 rounds. So fascinating. 1928, he would lose one fight on January 20th against the Nebraskan Wildcat, 8 Hutkins, New York City. He would lose in 10 rounds. So he would retire and he would open a restaurant business. He had total bouts 168. He KO'd 37. He won a decision 22 times. Lost on the draw. Lost on the decision twice. He was stopped one time. He entered into the Boxing Hall of Fame in 1961 and died on November 5th, 1970 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So salute to Lou Tendler. I must place him on my museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. He was a dynamite fighter. One of the greatest southpaws. And boxing history, he had a weapon of a jab. Fascinating jab. I just want to take a look in the Police Gazette book at that fight with Benny Leonard. Fascinating fighter was Lieutenant. Now here you have in the Police Gazette book, Benny Leonard to your left and Lieutenant to the right. Once again, you have Benny Leonard to the left shaking hands with Lou Tendler, who was to your right. And this was a very good fight. As you can see here, Benny Leonard with a stiff left jab to the face of Lou Tendler. Lou Tendler has his arms raised as Benny Leonard goes down. Fascinating classic fight. Like I said, one of the greatest southpaws was Lou Tendler. Down in my jab. Title fight between Benny Leonard and Lou Tendler. This fight took place on July 27th at Boyle's Dirty Acres in New Jersey. Leonard defeats Tendler, but champion is hard pressed. Benny has had Benny's has hands full with Philadelphia lightweight in great 12 round battle at Boyle's 30 Acres. Fascinating fight, fascinating fighter. I just wanted to give you an overview look at Lou Tendler. He's a dynamite fighter. Benny and Lou to meet again, but not this year. Because of the great scrap that Benny Leonard and Lou Tendler 
games of fans at Boyle's 30 Acres, there is an insistent demand for another meeting of these rival lightweights. Fascinating. Now, the promoter was Tix Record. And like I said, it was a very good fight. So, salute to Lou Tendler. This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. I will be entering him in my Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. Fascinating fight with these, these two young gladiators. Benny Leonard, Pooh's Tendler's master. Fight for title. Leonard regaining best form. Defeats Tendler easily in 15 rounds, title bout. So this was their rematch. And Benny Leonard just showed that he was a, a more witty fighter. Benny swarms all over Philadelphia, but fails to knock him out. 65,000 witness scrap at Yankee Stadium. Benny Leonard played host at a little surprise party before some 65,000 onlookers in the Yankee Ballpark Stadium up in the far reaches of Manhattan. The night of July 23rd, the lightweight champions guest for the occasions was his persistent challenger. I right, salute to these fighters. Salute to my subscribers. Peace.